Alright, so now we'll focus on the anterior pituitary. Now, just for completion, we'll just tell you about the um, posterior pituitary. Like I said, um, there's nerve terminals from the hypothalamus, and they secrete um, two products called oxytocin and vasopressin, which are released um, via the nerve terminals into the posterior pituitary. So, like I said, there was no actual synthesis of the hormones in the posterior pituitary. Now, for the hypothalamus here, like you can see, these are all the releasing factors. These releasing factors go into that um, that portal um, vessel system and um, thereby go into the anterior pituitary, which causes the anterior pituitary cells to secrete specific hormones. And the ones we're focusing on is this here, which is a growth hormone um, sort of system. And you can see here the growth hormone, releasing hormone, this is releasing factor will cause the stimulation of growth hormone to be released from the anterior pituitary whereas SS, somatostatin, will cause the inhibition of growth hormone so that will stop growth hormone being released into the body. Now this is another sort of diagram that emphasizes what I've just said but um, what you have to know is that there's also additional factors that will contribute to whether growth hormone is secreted or whether it's inhibited. Now growth hormone and you, as you'll see in what it sort of in its effects that we'll talk about later is actually secreted when there's a state of hypoglycemia or low blood sugar in the body um, you can think of that as occurring due to exercise and it's also um, secreted when there's um, when you're in deep sleep so these three are probably the most important um, in terms of in terms of clinically and conversely it's um, sort of inhibited when there's high blood um, blood glucose, which is hypoglycemia, or in REM sleep. Now, these sort of um, factors are important in the diagnosis of um, whether someone has growth hormone excess or does not have growth hormone being secreted at all. So if you didn't have growth hormone being secreted at all, um, as the name suggests, um, you're going to have failure of development as, as, as a child. And now, what this means is here is the glucose tolerance test and the insulin tolerance test. Now, now if we're talking about um, in sort of that previous scenario, was talking about the failure of development. So, if someone was failing to secrete growth hormone, if you gave, um, if you induced. Um, a state of hypoglycemia you would expect them to secrete growth hormone now if they had a failure in their anterior pituitary to um, secrete growth hormone at all it would mean that if you gave them insulin which would cause them to have um, a low blood gl glucose they would not be able to secrete growth hormone and that's what you would measure and you would see that the growth hormone levels did not elevate and the way we measure usually growth hormone is by this factor here IGF which is one of the um, products of growth hormone. Uh, conversely, like we, um, we're talking about uh, growth hormone excess, is that if you in, um, induced a state of hypoglycemia, you would expect the growth hormone levels and the IGF levels to thereby decrease. And if they did not, that would mean there is some sort of mechanism that's preventing them from being decreased. And that what that usually is, is a tumour of the cells of the anterior pituitary which cause growth hormone secretion and these cells are called somatotrophs. Now we'll quickly go into the growth hormone effects and now what um, the effects are basically is that growth hormone will act on um, the JAK-STAT pathway when it binds to the um, JAK-STAT receptor it dimerizes um, the JAK um, proteins will come and bind to this um, intracellular part and phosphorylate all these other intracellular molecules like stat etc and that will cause transcription so the main effects here um, are on muscles so they'll um, decrease the glucose uptake which causes um, hyperglycemia fat they will um, cause high lipolysis and liver they'll cause gl gluconeogenesis and basically all of this is, um, is sort of uh, you're putting energy into the into the body now 
the other thing is to um, know is that it will cause high blood glucose and that's important later when you look at the symptoms now as we can see here the growth hormone excess symptoms now firstly we'll talk about um, if it happens if you find like there's a tumor before that um, as a child what happens is that uh, the children usually have um, these long bones here uh, which have these growth plates and as a child will grow because um, these growth plates um, allow us or allow our long bones to extend vertically and so if you have um, excessive growth hormones before these um, growth pl um, plates fuse it means that these long bones are going to continually grow excessively long and you can see that in this picture here of a person with gigantism now alternatively um, you've got acromegaly acromegaly is the reference to growth hormone excess after the growth hormone uh, plates sorry the growth plates have fused so that means that these long bones don't necessarily um, grow any longer but um, growth hormone will have an effect on other body sy systems so the effects will be on things like cartilage soft tissue organs now what you would see is that the cartilage would expand so what you would see is that the person might show large ears large nose as you can see here might have a large nose large ears um, the soft tissue so um, what you can see in their face is that they'll progressively become more hardened in the face more rough more coarsened as you can see here and on their organ system so what will happen is their liver will get uh, bigger their spleen will get bigger um, their heart will get bigger so all these signs of organomegaly and unfortunately the, the cardiomegaly uh, or the cardiac dilat dilatations they're, they're a major cause of death for these people the other things are the metabolic sy um, symptoms so like we said before it actually increases the amount of glucose in the body and so that what that ha um, results in is a development of insulin resistance and so these people um, will end up developing diabetes as I said decreased glucose uptake um, the other sort of um, effects or sim uh, uh, symptoms you'll see is that uh, they're more prone to getting um, colon cancer as well and that's another um, another morbidity sort of issue with these um, people the other things um, with the soft tissue and cartilage you'll, you'll see them having very large hands very large feet things like that the other symptoms you'll see here is like I said with the expansion of the tumor goes into the optic um, chiasm and this is the the crossing over that I was sort of mentioning before if you look on the right it's a very simple um, and basic diagram and so if you get um, well you see this nerve here this will sort of um, innovate um, the central vision so these external nerves and this middle one here will innovate for the, for the um, peripheral vision so what happens in the optic chiasm here which is this part here if you get an expansion here what normally happens is that these nerves will um, be compressed and there'll be too much pressure around here so that means um, the peripheral vision will go and it means it will only leave the central vision so what happens is that they develop a, um, a, a, a sort of a problem called a, um, bitemporal uh, hemonopsia so it's a bit hard to pronounce but um, it just means that the uh, temporal vision which is the same as the peripheral vision um, will become uh, darkened or they just won't be able to see well through there and they'll only have the central vision there so it's sort of like tunnel vision